Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And bless the kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are given. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts. By the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand and let us recite together the glory. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to the people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receiving our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise, and make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the lessons. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. No, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain, but though we had already suffered and been shamefully mistreated at Philippi, as you know, we had the courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak, not to please mortals, but to please God who tests our hearts. As you know, and as God is our witness, we never came with words of flattery or with a pretext for grief, nor did we seek praise for mortals, whether from you or from others, though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we are gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. And we will read the psalm responsibly by half verse. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, for the land and the earth were born, you turn us back to the dust and say, The land is not on the earth. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past. And like a watch in the night. You sweep us away like a dream. We fade away suddenly like the rest. In the morning it is green and flourishes. In the evening it is dried up and withered. Return, O oh Lord. How long will you tarry? Be gracious to your servants. Satisfy us in your loving kindness in the morning. So shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Make us glad by the measure of the days that you afflicted us. And the years in which we suffered adversity. Show your servants your works. And your splendor to their children. May the graciousness of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper the works of our hands. Please stand. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, the lawyer, 
ask him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He has said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, The son of David. He said to them, How is it then that David by the Spirit calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Here again the words of Paul to the Thessalonians. But just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak, not to please mortals, but to please God who tests our hearts. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable unto you, O Lord my rock and my redeemer. Amen. So my friends, today we begin our easing process into our annual stewardship campaign, which begins in earnest next Sunday, All Saints Sunday. Next Sunday we will remember all those saints of the church who have gone before us and left us the responsibility to carry on. So this Sunday, I'd like to speak with you briefly for a few moments in just one way that I believe we are called to fulfill that responsibility. And I have a lot to say in the coming weeks about stewardship, as others will who will be giving you their testimony on the subject. Stewardship can be and is defined in many different ways, but today I want to give you one of my favorites. Quote, Stewardship is the reenactment of Christ's life in Christ's people. Listen to that again. Stewardship is the reenactment of Christ's life in Christ's people. In today's gospel passage, we hear Jesus telling us that loving God and loving neighbors are the two greatest commandments. In fact, he reminds us that these two commandments are the foundation for all of the law and all of the prophets. One of my favorites, Richard Rohr, says, quote, We love because God has loved us first. You see, Rohr believes that when we accept the unconditional love and undeserved mercy that God offers us, that we can allow God to love others through us in the same way. It is God in you, loving you with warts and all, and God in you, loving others as they are. My friend, stewardship is a form of ministry. It is our way of sharing our values and inviting other people into our mission. Baptized into the body of Christ, we commit ourselves to strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being. We are commissioned and sent to build a society where all have adequate access to health care where the weakest are protected, where every person is treated with dignity and respect under law. You see, that work out of necessity requires committed engagement in the civic life of our nation, which means we must be faithful stewards of one of the most powerful and sacred instruments given to us as citizens of this great country, the vote. 
We know it's a right to vote, but our presiding bishop, Michael Curry, calls it an obligation. Speaking to All Saints Church in Pasadena, California, just last year, Curry said, and I quote, it is a Christian obligation to vote. And more than that, it is the church's responsibility to help get souls to the polls. End quote. Now I'm going to rely on presiding bishop quite a bit during this sermon because I truly believe that Michael Curry is a prophetic witness to the importance of voting in our time. He is not reluctant to remind us of the chilling portrait painted by our current realities. Child, parent, separations at the U.S. border, a rise in hate crimes, attacks on the inalienable rights of all persons empowered and endowed by our Creator, and an increasing acceptance by members of our society of leaders who have no regard for the truth nor respect for the dignity of every human being. In the Pasadena Address, Bishop Curry said this, quote, Something is fundamentally wrong when crowds chant about a congresswoman, a Somali-American, and say to send her home. And when the President of the United States says, you need to go back home to four congresswomen of color who have just openly been critical. I might add personally that I think something's fundamentally wrong when our elected president calls upon the Attorney General of the United States of America to charge with a crime the only other candidate running for president two weeks before the election, and then he leads rally cries that say, lock him up. Now, I hope you won't take offense at hearing from this from the pulpit. And in making such observations, let me again quote Bishop Curry. Quote, this is not a partisan statement. This is a moral statement, he said. Something is wrong. We must help America. The country we love. The country we love. So I say again to you, love God and love neighbor. These are the foundations of the law and the prophets, and I would argue, stewardship. And being a good steward of God's gifts requires us to vote. If you feel uncomfortable hearing this from the pulpit, let me again reference Bishop Curry's words. He said, quote, What does voting have to do with the gospel? What does voting have to do with being a Christian? An election for public office is not a popularity contest between two or more people. It's a contest of ideas about how to shape the future of a community, a nation, maybe even the world. It's a contest, a debate, a discernment of moral values and their relationship to public policy. Voting is an act of moral agency. It is an act of moral discernment and a decision. It is how a community, a nation, decides how the moral values that it holds and shares shape public policy and the lives of people." End quote. My friends, we must respect the right of every citizen to cast his or her vote according to the dictates of their conscience. By doing so, we are respecting the dignity of every human being. But we must vote. If you haven't done so already, I hope you will do so sometime in the next nine days as an act of Christian stewardship. If you need help or you know somebody that needs help, let me know. We'll figure out a way together to help them cast their vote. You know, the Bible says we have one Lord, one faith, one baptism. But remember that our civil, civil partisan neutrality does not require moral neutrality. In the words of Bishop Curry, quote, voting and participation in our government is a way of participating in our common life, and that is a Christian obligation. We are blessed as a nation to vote. As citizens of this country, this is a right, an obligation, a duty. Go vote. Vote your conscience. Your conscience formed by what it means to love your neighbor. 
to participate in the process of seeking a common good, to participate in the process of making a better world. However you vote, go and vote. And do it as followers of Jesus. Standing now as you're able, as followers of Jesus, let us again affirm our faith using the ancient words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God the Father, God from God.
We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Sing this hymn to proclaim your holy name. Holy, 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 hol
holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father. In your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. He was handed over the suffering of death, our Lord Jesus Christ, to pray. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of the faith. Christ is dying. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, that we may faithfully receive this communion and serve you with unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day bring us with all your saints into joy and your eternity. All this we ask of your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, and with him, and with him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to our honor and glory is yours, to Almighty God and Father, now and forever. Savior Christ has taught us we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Get on them in your hearts by faith. With great thanks. Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life, man.
Jesus, who walks on one of his beads, walk with you to the end of the road. May the Lord Jesus, who serve with wounded hands, enable you to serve others. And may the Lord Jesus, who loves with a wounded heart, be your first love always. Love God wherever you are, with whomever you are this week, and with everyone you meet in our community. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, remain with you this day and always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.